Phone Me in the Evening by Peter Lloyd. With Miles Anderson as Spencer Jones and Kathy Sarah as Lee. Jones, please speak after the bleep. If your message is for Spencer Jones, the piano tuner, don't bother. He can't be reached here anymore, and messages for him will not be passed on. Thank you. Nina, it's Dennis. I had no idea. I've just got Spencer's message. I don't know what to say. Nina, I can't get an answer from the workshop. If you see Spencer, I don't suppose you will, will you? If you do, can you tell him I'll meet him over there tonight? And don't worry, Nina. I'll knock some sense into him. He must be crazy. I'll see you soon, eh? Nothing you can do, mate. It's too late. your message yeah I can't believe it well it's true I had no idea well it happened where are you staying here here I put an airbed in the corner so she did throw you out well that's how men and women differ see a woman can like you one day not the next They can turn it off like a tap. We aren't like that. You reckon? Not like that. You hear a lot about what men do to women. But what about what women do to men? Who is this other woman? Lee. Who's Lee? You wouldn't know her. Been seen her long? A couple of months on and off. But it's over. So why can't you and Nina... That's what I mean. Off like a switch. Like a beer. Thanks. I've always found Nina easy to talk to. You've had better luck than me, then. What I mean is... If you calm the atmosphere in our house, you can make semtics. Okay, Spence, let's just be calm. Calm? Yeah. I am calm. Okay. If I was any calmer, I'd be dead. I was just going to... I'm air, she's fire. Together we make explosions. It's not easy. Not easy? (laughs) I feel like someone's just worked over my heart with a lump hammer. That's how I feel. But if it's over with... What's her name? Lee. So why can't you two get back together? Me and Nina? Yeah. You tell me. Cheers. Can't I talk to her? I can put your side of it. She likes me. I can find out what she's thinking. Get you together again. Not until she becomes a human being. Oh, come on. I'm sure it's something simple. Something you can work out. Is that what you think? It must be. Been married 20 years, for God's sake. I'm certain. Okay. If you're so clever, do it. So? So what? Who's Lee? It's a bit weird, Den. Go on. One, two, three, four. I've lost my heart To a crazy woman Crazy woman. Oh. Hello. Who's that? Spencer Jones. Spencer. That's right. I've got to talk to you, Spencer. I'm all alone here. Who is this? I've got to talk to someone or I'll go mad. Uh, who do you want to speak to? Um, it's here somewhere. Three eight double seven zero seven. Well, that's my number, but I'm going mad, Spencer. I don't know what I'll do. 
I'm not taking on any new work right now. What do you, what do you mean? I'm busy. But it's taken me ages to pluck up the nerve. I've been sitting here all afternoon and the only thing that's kept me going is the thought of ringing you. No, listen, I, I don't know who you think I am. The counsellor. Counsellor? Well, that's what it says. Counselling 387707. I'm a piano tuner. Well, why have I got your number? <laughs> I don't know. Where did you get it? I don't know. Because I work with pianos. It was, it was ages ago. I, I think it was someone in the bar. And then they give, they've given you the wrong number. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Oh, but I'm desperate. I've done something bad. What? Something very bad. Or, or that's how others see it. I, I expect you'll think I'm a monster, too. <laughs> and that's why I wanted the counsellor. Counsellors just listen, don't they? They don't criticise. I'll listen. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know you, anyway. Well, most but... people think I'm a freak. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm pretty tolerant. Because... The maternal feelings. They're supposed to be the strongest a woman has, aren't they? But me, I didn't have a chance. I had two children before I was 20. What do you know at 20? I didn't know who I was. You change a lot in your 20s. Well, you're telling me. I'm 30 now, Spencer, and I'm the manager of a hotel. If I'd known then what I know now, oh, it was all a ghastly mistake. Should I have to pay for it for the rest of my life? Well, let's face it, I'm a terrible mother. So, uh, am I right... You've done something to your kids? Yes. What? Go on. I walked out on them. Isn't that terrible? Aren't you shocked? No. Oh, you're a man. You can say that. I really wanted an abortion when I was expecting Kelly. Do you think I'm a monster? No. No? Oh, my mum thought I was the worst person in the world. You see... For me, Spencer, the love I feel for a man is the strongest feeling in my life, far stronger than any love I feel for my children. It's the way I'm made. I can't help that. It's just there. Yeah, I can go along with that. But people make you feel so bad. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Spencer. I'm going to have to put the phone down. Listen, I, I don't mind. I'm sorry. I couldn't be fagged. I'm a bit off my face today. Again? And my fingers hurt. What? Enough. Enough not to work, but not enough not to play. Yes, as it happens. See the doctor. Ha! Huh, doctors? Well, at least you'd find out what... I'd rather go to a vet. The doctor could have tests done. I just overdid it, stringing the backstein. You've strung thousands of pianos. Your fingers never ate before. Look at last time I said... Doctor, I'm lethargic. He does his tests, and I come back, and what does he say? Oh, this is different. If it's arthritis... You've got the results. You're perfectly healthy. You're just lethargic. I mean to say... Look, I don't care how much time you spend at the keyboard. No? Just as long as you don't let the business fall apart. You've a great little business. You'd be mad... I want to play all the time. It's all I want to do. Well, what planet are you on, Spencer? Because you're not on this one. Not at all. Hello. Can I speak to Spencer, please? Who is that? It's Lee. Lee? Yes. Do you know a Lee? Give it to me. Who is it? Hello? I I'm sorry about that, that crying. <laughs> Better now? Much. Good. Oh, you've no idea how much it helped, just talking to you. I'm glad. It cheered me up. I hope you don't mind. You're welcome. Oh, thanks. Was that your wife? Yes. I thought you were alone. I was. My wife came in just now, <laughs> while you were crying. Uh, only because I'm alone, I pictured you alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was. My wife works. She's just come home. I I've got my own picture of you in my head. I wonder if you're anything like it. What sort of picture is that? Well, you've got a lovely voice. <laughs> a kind voice. Gentle but strong. Am I embarrassing you? A bit. <laughs> what? I'm a bit embarrassed. <laughs> 
is this, Spencer? But anyway, I wanted to thank you. It's nothing. I feel much better now. Good. It's good just to tell someone, like a confession, just to tell you straight out and not to have you say I'm obsessed or that I'm selfish and unnatural. Oh, that's worth a lot. <laughs> it doesn't help to condemn a person. Oh, that's it. It's better to understand. Oh, you've hit the nail on the head there, Spencer. Condemnation. I've had my fill of that since this thing started. I still don't have a story. What's happening to you? The full story? Yes. It'd take too long. I'm not going anywhere. Well, I have to get ready. My boyfriend's coming. Ah. Uh, he rang just now. He did? While I was crying. He'll be here in a minute. I just wanted to thank you. No problem. No? Nope. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I really mean it. Don't worry. Bye, then. So, is that it? Take care. So? You know as much as I do. Oh, excuse me, that can't be right. She rang before you came in. Thought I was a counsellor. Counsellor? Yes, counsellor. You mean marriage guidance? Or... Yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> you? Well, what's wrong with that? Where'd you get the number? In a bar. A I... bar? I think she said... Oh, a number? Yes. Well, doesn't that worry you? It was a wrong number. She rang it twice. What's wrong with helping someone? She's... One of these crazy people, Spence. She's not crazy, just upset. She had to abandon her children. What? She had to. Had to? Well, she did. A woman who can't look after her own kids? Oh, don't let's... Oh, what did you tell her? It's all right. I just listened. You listened? Yes. I just let her talk, and when there was a pause, I said, yes or no. Well, that's counselling, isn't it? She needs proper help. Aren't you worried? No. There are a lot of crazy people out there, Spencer. I know. I tune their pianos. A woman don't do that sort of thing, Dan. Nuisance calls. Heavy breathing. Oh, I don't know. It's men who do that. Remember Helen. Helen? The depressed one, into body piercing, rings on every fold of skin. Oh. <laughs> Helen. I remember when we split up. And? She rang me 40, 50 times a day. Well, that's different. I had to get my calls intercepted. You had a relation. Changed my number and went ex-directory. This woman doesn't know me from Adam. So why'd she ring you? It wasn't like that. All right? Yes, but it wasn't like that. Not at first. <coughs> Hello? Remember me? Lee, I rang yesterday. I know. I'd like to talk to you. I can hang up if you... No, it's all right. Because but... something bad happened. What about your boyfriend? What about him? Can't you talk to him? That's the problem... We've split up. Ah. It all got too complicated. I left my husband and my children because I loved Robbie, see? And, and Robbie had to decide about leaving his wife. It, it took him about six months. Six months? And yesterday he made up his mind. For definite. <laughs> and didn't he leave it a bit late? Oh, it's not his fault. He nearly went out of his tree, poor thing. He doesn't love her. He loves me. But... She hasn't done anything to him, nothing specific to make him leave. You see what I mean? No. Well, she can't cope without him. She'd go mad. It's bad enough for her knowing about me. So she knows? Oh, yes. But she's weak while I'm not. Only sometimes it doesn't feel like it, do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, Robbie's been having a rare old time, hasn't he? Robbie? He's had two women for six months. Oh, that's not what I... When things get sticky, he goes back to his wife. Oh, he doesn't want to. He's devoted to me. Well, don't you think he's got a funny way of showing it? I thought you understood. You, well, you think I've got no judgment? You think I'd let myself be taken in by some skirt chaser? No. I manage a hotel, for God's sake. I have to know how people work. Well, if you condemn me... I don't. For someone who understands... I don't know. Sometimes... Well, it's just men get what they can, you know. Most people don't understand. They know nothing. They're ignorant. You're not like that. No. How old are you? <laughs> oh, now. How old? Well, 
Forty. Forty-six, actually. <laughs> Old. Is it? It's a nice age. I don't know. It's mature. You mature at 40. Well, yes. I like men over 40. They're better looking while women go all wrinkly. <laughs> and they're more confident. Oh, that's certainly <laughs> true. But... Oh, I don't know. You look back on what you've been doing and... Well, you don't want to waste your life, do you? No. There's so much potential. But what do you spend your time doing? What do you do? I didn't I say I tune pianos? Oh, really? And restore them. That's lovely. Well, I've started playing in a band. <gasps> You're a musician. I write music. <laughs> it's what I always wanted to do. And then the kids got in the way. I and... knew you were a clever man. Like have grown up now. Very clever and very nice. <laughs> you know, I'd like to meet you. Well. Well, just for a chat. Are you free tomorrow? I could be. I can talk to you. Now at a... At lunchtime? And where could we... You know, the great? The public bar's quiet. We can have a proper talk. Oh, I'd love that. <laughs> oh, I'm needed downstairs. Well, how will I know you? Well, I'm a blonde. I'm, I'm nice looking. <laughs> <laughs> no. But it's true. And I'll be wearing a navy polyester suit with a red bow at the neck. Look, I'll be there. One o'clock. Bye. Bye. make this work I've lost my heart to a crazy woman a crazy woman who treats me wrong if I could get it right it could be could be. a film? I'd rather not. Oh, come on, there's nothing on telly. No. Why not? We're not getting on, you know. Eh? In fact, I don't know why we're still together. <sighs> well, that's nice, isn't it? After 22 years and two children, suddenly, well, that's very nice. You don't respect me. You don't respect my work. Let's face it. You're not going to be a pop star, are you? Not now. And if you think you are, you're several crotchets short of a cantata. Excuse me. Sorry, sir. Same again. Not bitter. Yes. Forgot to look in here. All the action's in the other bar. It's the food. It's very popular. Was there a lady in here? A lady? Yes. Well, there was a lady. I... What was she like? You know around here. Yes? I mean, uh, you know what it's like? Round here. Well, you see, uh, we get lots of ladies in this bar, but they're no ladies, if you see what I mean. Ah, one pound forty. Um, what was she like, your lady? Blonde. Well, this was a blonde. With a navy suit, like hotel workers wear. Hotel workers? Receptionists and managers, I suppose. Well, this lady had leggings on and a little skirt. No, that wasn't her. Well, I hope she comes, your lady. Sure, she's 45 minutes late. 45 minutes? I wouldn't wait 45 seconds, not for a lady. But, uh, listen. <clears throat> if you want a lady in a suit, you know... No, got... this is a particular lady. <laughs> a special lady. Right. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> but, take my tip. No lady special enough to wait that long for. You want to find yourself another special lady. I'm sorry, it's Lee in 
I'm terribly sorry. I couldn't make lunchtime. It was just complete madness at work. We had no drinks at the bar. Someone lost the key to the cellar. And then the computer went down, and we had to find the forms and do everything manually. And two rooms were double booked. And before I knew it, it was way after when I said I'd meet you. But it's all over now, and I'm by myself again. I'd love it if you rang me back. Uh, my number, it's Hello, Fast Bite Sandwich Bar. Nina. Spencer, you're late. I've been at the workshop. Well, I rang you there. I didn't answer. <laughs> I was getting to grips with the Beckstein. How are your fingers? Okay. It's good to talk to you. Is it? Yes. Really? Yes. Of course. I thought you'd gone off me. I'm sorry. Well, you've been strange. Don't, Nina. Don't what? Well, don't worry. Okay? Okay. Out of books. I've cracked it. I'm coming home. <laughs> It's a bad line. Is Spencer there? No. It's Lee. I know. I've got to talk to him. Why? I need his help. I don't see how. He can help me sort my head out. Spencer? Yes, he, he's got a sort of wisdom. You probably don't notice being so close. You probably take it for granted. If you knew him better... I know him enough. Haven't you got anyone else? No. A boyfriend? We split up. Well, darling, that's not Spencer's problem. Will you ask him to call me? He won't talk to you. Why not? He can't help. You need a professional. Is that what he said? If Lee rings, tell her to phone the Samaritans. That's what he told me. Can I hear that from him? He's not here. I don't believe you, actually. Well, let me tell you. You're sick, actually. You should get some proper help. No, you can't. Thank you. What a lovely way to burn. What a Your friend just rang. Wanted to talk to you. What did you tell her? That you said no. So? What did she say? She didn't like it. 
Anything else? Should there be? No. Sarah was in the sandwich bar today. Oh, yes? She told me about this weird phone call she got. Nina. This chap phones her up, right? He says he's doing a survey on bedspreads and nightwear for her magazine uh-huh. and that he'll send her a free pair of pyjamas if she answers a few questions. He said he got my boxer shorts. So, he starts off asking her things like, you know, whether she finds cotton or nylon more comfortable and how much she would spend on nightwear. But pretty soon, he's getting into exactly what she wears in bed and sort of raunchy things. <laughs> Eventually... He asks her where her boyfriend sleeps. So she just says, on top of I'm lucky, and slams the phone down. You see, Spencer, there are a lot of fruit loops. <laughs> I know. And they use the phone. I know, you're right. I know I'm right. Pass me a T-shirt. I've got nice arms, like a boxer. Oh, come on, Nina. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Stop messing about. You used to like it when I did this. No, it's not that. I suppose you'd rather it someone else. Someone like Lee. <laughs> you must be joking. You can't have a relationship with someone like that. They're either high as a kite or flat down on the floor, never anywhere in between. And it's their body chemistry or... You know what made it work between us? What? The boys. I loved them. You loved them. It pulled us together. Now they're gone. We need another baby. Let's make a baby, Spence. Ow! Sorry. Don't do that. I'm not in the mood. Let's have a baby. No way, Nina. I look at our friends and they're all depressed. And I look at people with babies and you know what? What? They're happy. Oh, that's because they're brain dead. No. They're happy because they've got something outside themselves. Something more important than their trivial little lives. When the pusher comes in through the door, creativity goes out the window. I've done my stint of parenthood, thank you. Where are you going? Keyboard. You didn't like being stood up. Why would you? Did you tell Nina about it? Why should I? I've just done a good deed that went wrong. A good deed? What's the matter? Don't you think I do good deeds? Sure. Because I do. What's life for? I like to help people. Only I don't brag about it. Now, I can't give someone a hand at no cost to myself. So, you kept stum. I hid my light under a bushel. Anyway, things between Nina and me... Yeah? ...weren't too good. No, really? Yeah, really. Why? <coughs> you were ups and downs. Yeah. <coughs> These cans aren't working. <laughs> you tell everything to Josie. What, are you kidding? So you have secrets. What they don't know, don't know it to me. Yeah. Cheers. You've got to be careful with Nina. Things enter her head and... Like this wanting a baby. If a woman wants a baby, it's not... It's not just like wanting a new car, is it? Especially if it's her last chance. But you're not into it. I just want to hang out in sleazy pubs and play keyboards. Can't you play music and... She'll stop work and I'll be back full time, won't I? If I never see the inside of another piano, I'll be ecstatic. I mean, is that it? Is this all I am? Is... Is this what they'll carve on my grave? Spencer Graham Jones, piano tuner? When it could say, musician? What's wrong with just being a good bloke? It's not enough, Dennis. Well, I'd give her a baby. I don't doubt it. My genes are valuable. No, it's different for you. You never had one. Not to my knowledge. I got two great louts at college. I know all about it. Is this why you went for Lee? I'm not like you. I don't go after women. In fact, I forgot Lee for... Ooh, a month. She was history. But Lee, she's like a dog with a frisbee. Hey? She won't let go.
Huh? Hi. Remember me? <laughs> yes. How are you? Well. Surprised to hear from me. Um. Because you sound like you just watched me beam down from the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> I am surprised, yes. I want to thank you. What for? You got me through a difficult time, a very difficult time. So you're feeling better? Oh, I've copped on to myself, Spencer. Yeah? Oh, yes. Robbie and me, we went on holiday. That helped. Good. Two weeks in Spain, that helped a lot. It was a big number, Spencer. We played the casinos, we danced, we sailed, we hung out in bars, we, we drove fast cars around hairpin bends. It was like being in a movie, a big budget movie, a blockbuster. <laughs> Honest, Spencer, it was the most romantic two weeks of my life. I'm not kidding. We had such a good time that Robbie made up his mind. He couldn't live without me. So he told his wife what was going on. I thought she knew. Oh, not that I was on holiday with them. Hang on. Robbie went to Spain with his wife? Yes. And you? I went separately. They stayed at the Casablanca and I stayed in the Rialto just across the way. And you saw him without her knowing? Oh, they're different, see? She doesn't like activities. She just wants to lie in the sun. And while she's frying by the pool, we're off having fun. Every morning, Robbie hung a T-shirt over the balcony, right? If it was coloured, it meant meet him in half an hour. But if it was white, he had to be with her, and I was to look for another signal after lunch. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? You didn't mind? Uh, mind? I loved it. It was the craziest fortnight of my life. It was so much fun, it shouldn't be legal. And I don't mind telling you, it was a turn-on. How do you mean? I mean, a real turn-on, Spencer. Robbie thought so, too. That's why he came to live with me. But once someone's sitting on the edge of your bed in his knickers telling you his problems, the magic sort of goes, doesn't it? Hmm. Oh, we had the most horrendous rows. It was impossible. And he's back home again, thank God. Well, you see, I'm not ordinary, Spencer. Not me, I'm special. I know it. And Robbie, he can be good fun. But really underneath, he's... Well, he's not like you, Spencer. He's not a dreamer. He's not an artist. He's not special. Because you, you're clever. You can make music. All he can do is make rows of figures add up. Hmm. Do you think I'm mad? No. Oh, you see, I knew you'd understand. What are you doing? How's your music? All right. We're doing a lot of gigs. Oh, that's wonderful. And playing our own material. Oh, your own songs? Yeah. <gasps> I'd love to hear them. Well, you could book us into your hotel. <laughs> oh, I don't work there anymore. No? I needed a change. I'm thinking of going abroad. When? Soon. But I'd love to hear your band. Well, you know the Green Man? Yeah. We play it next Friday, Friday <laughs> night. You want to come? Can I? Sure. You can buy me a drink. I will. <laughs> I've lost my heart to a pretty woman. She cheats on me and treats me wrong. But I still love her, that pretty woman. Because I. Feet, and it's time for us to take a breather. We'll be back with more foot tapping rhythms in about 15 minutes. Thank you. Spence. Spence. Yeah. Fan of yours. Oh. Lee. Hi. Hello. <laughs> we meet at last. <laughs> <laughs> you disappointed? Oh, why? Because I'm the short ass bandy legged one. <laughs> You're nice. <laughs> really? You know that. Can I get you a drink? Oh, I've got one. Where are you sitting? Uh, over here. And what do you think of the band? It's nice. Everyone's having a good time. It doesn't sound at its best in here, of course. It's... <laughs> here. Because we uh, try to play what we like, see? Oh, that's what you like? That stuff? Don't you? 
Oh, it's so sad. My wife just left me. My dog just died. My little boy's dying of cancer. It's, it's real, eh? <laughs> it's life. I love it. It just gets me... Yeah. <laughs> you think I'm mad? No. You see, if you've got a dream, you've got to go for it, haven't you? I mean, Nina makes jokes about geriatric cowboy superstars and everything, but if you just have one hit, your name's in the book, you've done it. You've had your moment of glory. And the experience. No one can take that away from you. You smoke. Oh, thanks. <laughs> You know what I think? I think you're like me. Hmm? I think you're a chancer. You reckon? I'm sure of it. It's not easy to be that way, Spencer. People don't understand. Look at me. <laughs> Robbie told me I need therapy. But why? I enjoy myself. This is me. It's what I'm like. <laughs> Before I left my children, that's when I needed therapy. I used to daydream that they and Ian were killed in a car crash and I was free to be with Robbie. I used to want it. I longed for it. I was in parallel worlds. One in which I loved my kids and one... This video was uploaded to the channel Thinking Out Louder. Please like, comment and subscribe to the Thinking Out Louder channel. Thank you. Which I wanted them dead. That's not healthy, Spencer. Not for me, not for them, not for anyone. You find it shocking? No. Oh, I do. I shock myself. Oh, I'm an obsessive person, Spencer. Look, I, I get nervous in crowds. I can't talk here. Here's my address. Where are you going? Well, I can't sit here by myself. Because there's some good numbers coming up. I'm uncomfortable here. But listen, I want to talk to you. Why don't you come to my place afterwards? I can't do that. Why not? You know, I'm... I'm not asking you to have an affair with me or anything. Just to come and talk, because... We've got things in common. Yeah, but... I can't. You want to, don't you? Yeah, but... Well, I'm asking you to be my friend. I don't do that to everyone. I do it to hardly anyone. Listen, we could meet tomorrow. In the pub? Tomorrow? Well, it's time for all you cowboys and cowgirls to get up on the dance floor and get ready for a hot one. <laughs> Phew, it was there on a plate, man. Why'd you turn it down? Uh, it wasn't like that. She had the raging hots for you, old son. Honestly, don't <laughs> come off it. I'd have been in there like a rat up a drain pipe. <laughs> There's more crack in being asleep than awake in our bed these days. If I set someone's knickers alight, I make damn sure I put out the flames. It wasn't anything physical. A lady asks you home at night, and that's not physical. What cloud are you on? It wasn't on that level. I'm sorry, you've lost me. My lift doesn't go up to that floor. If it wasn't mm -hmm. physical, what was it? Spiritual. Is that what Nina thought? No. Oh. 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 Hello? Who is that? Hello? Is that... Is that Lee? Oh, no. Are you okay? No. What's the matter? I feel bad. Put the damn thing I down. Do, I feel so bad. Do you want me... To, do you want me to come round? Oh, yes. Well, I'll be there in half an hour, okay? Oh, thank you. You're going? Yes. You've been sick, huh? She was at the gig tonight. How'd she know about it? She phoned me last week. You never said. It wasn't important. And now you're off to her flat. I've got to. What for? She's in a bad way. So are lots of people, but I never noticed you hospital visiting. I never had someone going to top herself, did I? Is that what she said? She never threatened to, but it sounds that bad. I've got to go. If she did it, how would we live with ourselves? Okay. What are you doing? I'm coming. Don't be a div. The time she spoke to you, you told her to bog off. That's not going to win her confidence, is it? 
You got a face on you like a Methodist chapel on a rainy day. Here. I'll be back in half an hour, okay? What are you so happy about? Cheer up. Might never happen. Spencer. I feel such an idiot. Don't. No, I do. These feelings come from nowhere, and then, just as quickly, they go. Well, this time, I felt better as soon as I put down the phone. You knew I was coming. Hey. Maybe you felt better because you knew I was coming. Maybe. Don't ever feelings just come up and sweep you along. I've got one of those on me right now. You know what it is? What? I want to kiss all your cares away. We can't do that. You don't like me enough, eh? <laughs> I like you too much. That's the problem. If you touch me once, I'll be in way above my head. And I can't afford to do that. Not now. I'm off my nut, you see. I fall in love with people I can't have, Spencer. I only fall in love with people I can't have. And I feel bad. Isn't it mad? Isn't that crazy? Why do you think I do that? I don't know. It's a cycle, isn't it? My mum had the same trouble. And I'm talking about my real mum here, not my stepmum. Men climbed inside her head. And she couldn't get them out, could she? Till they lived with her. Then she lost interest. Who's she with now? Ah, You've hit the nail on the head there, Spencer. She found Alan. He's different. He's a painter. He's sensitive, see? He, mm -hmm. he understands. He could listen to her, talk to her, help her. He broke the cycle. When I met Robbie, I thought he could do that for me. Because he looked like an artist, you know. He's long and thin, and he's got long, thin fingers. You wouldn't believe such long fingers could work. And he's got gentle brown eyes <laughs> and a hairy chest like a monkey <laughs> I have to say he excited me as a lover I mean in fact he was an actuary but his temperament don't you see it was that of an artist so I threw myself at him and well you can see what I look like <laughs> Someone who looks like me, they can have any man they want, can't they, more or less? And I threw myself at him so completely, so shamelessly. My God, it makes me blush to think about it. The first thing I did was to change my name to his. How do you... By deed, Paul. I was fed up of carrying my husband's name. It was like a shackle. So I changed it to Batman. Batman? <laughs> Crazy or what? That's Robbie's name. Robin Batman. Robin. Oh, don't say it. I've heard them all. Now I hate it. I want to change it quick. What's your name? Jones. Mm, it's nice. Is it simple? It goes to Lee Jones. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds like a country singer. Anything that's not Batman. Batman's okay. You don't have to be called by it. Tape stopped. The mood's gone. I'll play another. No, it's gone. But, Robbie, the jobs we get, the destiny we have... Oh, don't you think... Well, it turns out he's got the soul of an actuary. Well, you know mm. what they say about actuaries, don't you? It's the job you do if you find accountancy too exciting. <laughs> oh, he won't take a risk, not a real risk. He wouldn't come to America with me. He thinks too much of his job. A thousand pounds a week. That's his price, Spencer. That's what he sold his soul for. Oh, you look shattered. I'm completely off my face. Oh, you poor man. We're still meeting tomorrow. In the pub, yeah? So, I'll see you there, then. <laughs> What happened? Sorry. I wasn't asleep. What happened? What do you think? You made passionate love all over her flat. <laughs> you really think that? I don't know what to think. She talked about her problems. She felt better. I left. End of story, OK? What problems? 
She has bad feelings. They come up and overwhelm her. Don't we all? Me as much as anybody. You? You're falling over yourself to go and talk to someone who's off her head. About her problems. That's all. While I'm sitting here watching my biological clock run down. And the only reason I'm not screaming is bits of my broken heart would spray all over the wallpaper. It's not that bad, is it? Bad? I'm devastated. We should never have got married. If you'd not got pregnant, we'd never have done it. I'd have kept on with my music. You'd have married Dennis. I'd have never married Dennis. You couldn't get enough of him. Only because he was a lovely dancer. I was a lovely dancer. <laughs> you? You dance like Douglas Bader. <laughs> Dennis danced like Fred Astaire. Apart from that, he's totally trivial. What's he done in the last 25 years? Sold enough agricultural machinery to gridlock the old central Britain and had more one-night stands than Michael Douglas. <laughs> and that's it. You were better than him. You still are. You were the best. And I'm lucky you're married to me. And when you're married, Spencer, you can't have this sort of relationship with another woman. <sighs> it's not a relationship. No? That's exactly what it is. If you meet someone and your hormones kick in and you give her a bit of welly, well, that's just a lad on the tongue, isn't it? But when you turn into a freelance social worker and start tinkering about with her psyche, that's different. It's a different story altogether. I didn't ask for this to happen, you know. I know. It just happened. What are you going to do? It's got to stop, hasn't it? Yes, yeah, Spence. Otherwise, it's bad news. Too right. Can we go to sleep now? And uh, a gin and tonic, please. A uh, gin and tonic for the lady. I've seen you before, haven't I? That's right. How are you doing? Same as a pan, mate. Didn't you come in here once looking for a lady? That's it. You ever meet her? That's her. The blonde lady over there. That's the one. Nice one. Like a happy ending. I don't like endings myself. Oh, it's not like that, is it? Afraid so. Well, good luck, mate. Thanks. Here. Here. Sit next to me. Here. I had a call from Robbie. Oh, yes? This morning. He offered to buy me a house anywhere I wanted in my name, if only he could come and live with me. Oh. Said it was all over with his wife and he was moving out anyway. Said how unhappy he was. <laughs> I said, if it didn't work out with you when you were happy, it's certainly not going to when you're depressed. And anyway, <laughs> I bought my ticket to Fort Worth. You have? Well, I haven't then, but I have now. Hmm. <laughs> I'm off next Tuesday. On Tuesday? Tuesday morning. That's sudden. It's... I'll work in a hotel. Totally illegal, of course. And leave this mess behind. He'll cope. He always does. He's the sort of bloke who goes into a revolving door behind you and comes out in front. He'll be OK. And you must be relieved. Well, no, actually. <laughs> Thought you'd be glad. No more distress calls. I was getting used to it. No more midnight crises. I was getting to enjoy them. So was I. In fact, I don't know how I'll manage without you. It was good last night. I'm glad. You did a good thing. No one else would do that for me. Man or woman. It was nothing. It was everything. You've done such a lot for me, Spencer. Now... I want to do something for you. I want to help you. You've been given a talent, a wonderful talent. It's like having a torch and being able to shine a beam of light in front of you. It's like you know where you're going. <laughs> I wish I had that. Only you're not going there. You're being held back. You're not going anywhere, and that hurts me. It hurts me here to see someone who could have something so good and who throws it away. So... Why don't you come to America with me? We can go anywhere. Follow the music scene, wherever it is. Nashville. Nashville? Well, 
anywhere, wherever you want. I'll work, you'll play. You've got to. You only get one life. It's a great gift. You've got to grab the opportunities, make something of them. You don't get many. I've fallen in love with you, Spencer. Crazy, isn't it? But I love you so much. And I can see. I can see from the way that you are that you love me, too. It's destiny, Spencer. It's fate. Come with me. What do you say? the answer phone of Spencer Jones, piano tuner and restorer. I'm sorry, there's no one here to take your call, but if you'd like to leave a message for Nina or myself, please speak after the beep. And Nina, uh, what we were saying about how we don't get on anymore, it's true, we don't. It's not easy for me to say this, but I, I have to. I met Lee this afternoon, and I love her. I love her, and I want to be with her, and I can't come back home to you. Uh, Lee and me, we need some time to get ourselves sorted out. It's all so sudden. When we've done that, I'll get back to you maybe tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. I'm sorry it has to be like this, but I was right. It just isn't happening between us. It hasn't been for a long time. I'll speak to you soon. You left a message on the answer phone? Yes. Why? I was gobsmacked, Dennis. I was picking myself up off the floor. The last thing I wanted was Nina melting the wax in my ears. Yeah, but the answer phone... Oh, come on, you've ditched drugs to women. Not after 20 years. I was totally off my face, all right? One minute it was business as usual. Next minute, I'm going to Nashville in five days. Anyway, I told her I'd talk to her when I got my head sorted out. OK, Nina. You got my message last night? Hmm? I've got myself sorted out, and uh, I'm ready to talk now. Give me a ring when you get back. I'm at Lee's. The number is a three... Eight double six three zero. Oh. Come on, Nina. You must be there. We've got to sort things out. The sooner we talk, the better it'll be for both of us. Uh, did I give you the number? It's three eight double six three zero. Oh. I probably did. Look, Nina, I know you're there because you're not in the sandwich bar. Let's meet in the grapes in 45 minutes. Would it help if I said we, we've not got much time left? I've made a decision. I'm emigrating. I'm going to America in five days. We're going to Nashville. I'll see you in the grapes. Where are you, Nina? I've been waiting an hour. What do you think you're gaining by this? You're not doing anything stupid, are you? If you're listening to this, I want you to come to the phone at once. Right, that's it. I'm coming round now. What did you change the locks for? If you're in there listening to this, why didn't you come when I tried to break in? Didn't you hear me get hurt? That double glazing, it just doesn't break. When I threw the brick, it just bounced back and hit me on the wrist. I'm in agony. There's a massive bruise and I'm scared I might have chipped a bit of bone off. There's something loose in there. I had to get a casualty. It took three hours before I got an x-ray, and then they just said, you'll live and let me go. I said I was a musician, but I didn't seem to realize my whole future depends on my wrist. Doctors! I suppose if people treat you like God, you begin to believe you are God. Hold on. Listen, I've spent all day trying to talk to you, and I've had enough. I shan't try again. It's up to you now. Ring me, 38 Just give me half an hour to get home. Nina, it's me. Lee and me, we've decided to go to America. I think I told you. 
Well, if I'm to go, I'm going to need some money. And if you don't see me, we're not going to be able to sort anything out. So on the way back from the hospital, I emptied our joint account. So if you want some cash, you better talk to me and we'll come to an arrangement. Things are moving fast, Nina, and I really need to talk. Look, I never meant to keep the money. I just wanted to, you to see me. I know I should have come to see you right away, but last night I was totally off my face. Listen, I'm desperate. If you're in there, please pick up the phone. Or even... I'm in the box opposite the house. I'm staring at the bedroom windows right now. Just come and stand there, will you? So I know you're all right. I'm worried about you, Nina. What are you doing? I have to tell you, things haven't gone that well between Lee and me. We had a disagreement. But I dare say we'll get over it. I can't see you yet. How nice it'd be just to get a glimpse of you now. I'm going back to Lee's. Please ring me. Hello, Leanne Batman. I want to speak to Spencer. I'm his wife. He's been trying to contact you. I went to visit our son. I'm not going to drop everything just because Spencer's gone AWOL. Now let him talk to me. He's not here. When's he coming back? He's not. He's left. He's left. Oh, you must understand. When we met, I'd just split up with my boyfriend. And, and me and Robbie's relationship, it was all over the place. We had rows, we made up, we rowed again. It was so passionate, it was crazy. We couldn't handle it, so we decided enough was enough, it was off. Then Spencer came along, and I could see... You won't like this. Go on. I could see he really fancied me. And I was off my head anyway, and, and Spencer, he's got a sort of wisdom, a sort of quiet strength. You sure about that? Well, whatever he's got, it was what I needed. And he really wanted to... So we moved in. But when Robbie, when he found out, he went berserk. I mean, <laughs> it was really insane. I mean, he's just not rational when I'm concerned. He's just not sensible. He's crazy about me. So he said, right, he's not going to America with you. I am. And Robbie, when he gets going, he's irresistible. I mean, he's like a juggernaut. I can't stop him. No one can. I'd never seen him so angry. He was exploding. What could I do? So I had to tell Spencer, I had to say that actually seeing him and me together was more than Robbie could stand. And Robbie and me, we've been through so much together. We're like two halves of one soul. And, and that really, unconsciously, all I'd wanted all along was for Robbie to come back to me and for us to go to America together. And, and Spencer, he's a good bloke. He's a brick. He took it like a man. He's lovely. I love him for that. So he's staying in his workshop and he's trying to get hold of you so that he can say it was all a ghastly mistake. And it's all over now. Are you still there? I'm here. Well, is that all right? Yes? I'd better be toddling. Me and Robbie, we've not got much time. We're off to Florida. <laughs> Bye. I'm sorry. There's no one here at the moment. 
If you have a message for Nina Jones, please speak after the bleep. If your message is for Spencer Jones, the piano tuner, don't bother. He can't be reached here anymore, and messages for him will not be passed on. Thank you. It's Dennis. Look, Nina, I'm in Spencer's workshop now, and, and we've just had a, a long chat. He's told me everything that's happened. He realises what a prat is. Hello? Hello? Hello, Nina. Hold on, I'm switching it off. Hello, Dennis? Come on. Uh, you're all right. Give Spencer! Spencer! Let me talk to her! Don't be a plank. Come on! Let, let, let me ask her. Spencer wants to talk to you. No way. She says no. Are you sure? I'm not deaf. Ask her again. I'll ring off. She says she'll ring off. Oh, if you look. Go and Dennis. sit down. There's a good bloke. Oh, he's not happy, Nina. Neither am I. No. L look, if I come round, I can explain the situation to you. Oh, quite frankly, Spencer's well out of it. You've got to get communications going, and I'm happy to be your middleman. How about it? Hang on. Tell her I love her. Tell her she's the love of my life. Tell her I'm yeah, all right, all right. Her. Put a sock in it, Spence, for God's sake. <sighs> Nina, I'll put him to bed, then I'll come round. How's that? Okay. She says okay. I'll see you in a few minutes. I am not in love, but I'm open to persuasion. Hello, Nina. You're looking good. What do you expect? A wronged wife from hell? No. When you hit the floor, you've got two choices. You sit there like a lump of dough or you bounce back up again. I intend to bounce back. What's he have to say for himself? He's not a happy chappy. I should hope not. He's been through the ringer and back. And the way I've just left him, it's like... He's lost the key to the meaning of it all at the bottom of the can of beer, only he can't remember which one. He's bevied up. Well away. He knows he's acted like a clown, but look at it like this. He's learnt from the experience... You know and... what I say? What? Send a turnip round the world and it comes back a turnip. Spencer's not thick. He emotionally is. He's acting like he is, but don't we all sometimes? OK, he got mixed up with a chancer and mistook her for a decent human being. But now he knows she's on planet nine. And he's learned the value of what he's got. I'll swear to that on a stack of Bibles. And who blame him for wanting you back? You've just got to look at you. You're beautiful. Shut up, Dennis. No, I mean it. You're lovely. Always have been. It's the sort of beauty that comes from the soul. Because Spencer sees it every day... He's blind to its special quality. He wouldn't know beauty if it came up and punched him in the kidneys. <laughs> it, it, what's the matter? Someone's peeling onions. Nina. Oh, Nina, come to Uncle Dennis. There you are. This is the first time I've cried. I believe you. I was determined to keep myself together. You have. You're brilliant. But inside... I know. I mean, he never says, Nina, you're wonderful. Let's go for a romantic meal, just the two of us. Let's do something nice together. Nothing like that. So I think, okay, that's just him. He can't show emotions. Perhaps he doesn't even have emotions. But now... He's all over this woman like a rash. And I think, or oh, maybe it's me. I'm useless. I'm unlovable. No, Nina. Oh, nothing. Here. Here, you're not like the others. That's true. But that's because you're special. You're better. That's sweet of you, love, but... No, it's true. And you're so special... I've never been able to, you know, like with other women. And that's because you're the one I respect. The only one I respect. Well, the others, they play more tricks than a carload of monkeys. But you, I don't know why I'm talking this way, but... Someone's got to help me, Dennis. 
Someone's got to make me feel good about myself. He's had his away day. Does he think I never wanted one as well? Just one. So that when I meet him, I can be on equal terms. So that I can feel like a human being again. Rather than a spot of grease on the floor. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. I've got the right, haven't I? Sure. And you're going to help me? Yeah. I am. Yeah. Come on, then. Rocking, Spencer. I am rocking him. I'll go. Come in, Dennis. Hurry up. Uh -oh, what's Spencer doing with that baby? Those are the sound of things. Where's the volume control? He never stops. Well, he won't if you hold him like that. Give him to me. Hush, darling. Hush now. The others were never this noisy. He wants a feed. Come on now. Here you are, here. He's not hungry. I'll answer that upstairs with you, Spencer. Come on, puppet. Is this what you want? Is this it? Hello? Hi, Spencer. Is that... <laughs> Lee, it's been a long time. <laughs> That's more like it. He was hungry, weren't you? He's a pretty baby. He's lovely, isn't he? Not a wrinkled prune like the other two. Who's he look like? My side of the family. Not like me? Shh. Is he mine? Do you want me to take a blood test? Is that necessary? That's what it'll take. Don't you know from just looking? Do you? No. So how am I supposed to? If I've got a son... Oh, please, Dennis. Don't let Spencer hear us. He's already gone fissile at having it work full time. This would just about cause a detonation. I'd like to know. So? You're talking about paying for his upkeep, are you? Oh, mm, no, nothing like that. Well... You'll just have to settle for the role of godfather, then. Miami was great. I'd still be there, only my mum died, my real mum, so I came for the funeral. I'm going back, though. If you're wondering about Robbie, me and him split up after a few days. I bet you guessed that. It was just one of those relationships, wasn't it? I'm glad I got him out of my system. I needed to. He was the cause of all my problems at that time. I'm different now. Look, Spencer, I've been thinking a lot about you and how it was with us and what I did to you and, well, I've a lot to tell you about the music scene out there and everything, so as I'm in town, why don't we meet up? I'm sorry, wrong number. Spencer? Who's that? It's Mick. I've got to talk to you, Mick. I'm all alone here. Uh, who is this? I I've got to talk to someone or I'll go mad. Y you don't mind, do you, if I talk to you? Just for a minute. What's it about, love? It's taken me ages to pick up the nerve to phone you, Mick. I've been sitting around all afternoon and the only thing that's kept me going is the thought of ringing you.
Charles Anderson was Spencer Jones, Kathy Sarah was Lee, and Jan Winters was Nina in Peter Lloyd's Phone Me in the Evening. Malcolm Ward was Dennis, Nicholas Bolton was Terry, Peter Whitman was the barman, and Dominic Letts was Mick. The original music was composed by David Chilton, who also played keyboards. Adrian Sledmere played guitar, and Adrian Degenhart played drums. The piano was tuned by Gary Beadle of Steinway & Sons, and the director was Ned Shiley. Thank you.